It's an extremely busy weekend in Chapel Hill, but lots of great opportunities for big time Carolina wins and welcoming some potential future Tar Heels to campus. I'm going to get you ready for all of it. You are Locked On Tar Heels, your daily podcast on the UNC Tar Heels, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, what's up? It's Friday, November 10th, 2023. Welcome into the Locked On Tar Heels podcast the only daily North Carolina show out there. I'm your host, Isaac Shade, and I want to thank you, especially you everydayers, for joining us to make Locked on Tar Heels your first listener watch to get your content about your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Jace Medical. Empower yourself when you purchase a Jace case, providing you with a personal supply of five antibiotics to treat 50 plus and infections. Get yours today at Jace Medical. Folks, it's great to be together on Friday, getting into the weekend. And again, it is going to be an absolutely loaded, busy weekend. Let's start on Sunday. We're going to work our way backwards. So we'll start with on Sunday with the men's basketball game, work back to the football game on Saturday. A couple uh, visits for uh, basketball recruits coming up this weekend. So we'll get you locked in on all that. But if you want to have more conversation about all of this, Come join us in the Locked on Tar Heels Discord chat, where we're talking all day long. Like literally earlier tonight, people were asking about um, the the signings with Drake Powell and then Ian Jackson signing coming up Saturday, what it means for Carolina scholarship count. So we were having all of those kind of conversations. Would love for you to come be part of it. The link is in the show notes. Seriously, come join us. We'd love to have you. Okay, let's start talking about the basketball game on Sunday. North Carolina hosting the Lehigh. Anybody know the mascot? Pause it if you want to guess. The Lehigh Mountain Hawks. It's Sunday, November 12th, 2 Eastern time on the ACC Network. There's no FanDuel line yet, so we'll just take the Ken Palm line. Carolina favored by 25 in this one. No way anybody would know this, but this is the second ever meeting between the Tar Heels and the Mountain Hawks. The other time they met, January 2nd of 1941. Not many of us, if any of us, alive back then. I was born in 84, so this is like 43 years before I existed, longer than I've been alive. Carolina won that game by 462 to 58. Lehigh is coached by Dr. My man's got a PhD, or maybe he's a medical doctor. That'd be even more impressive. Dr. Brett Reed, 17th season. He's been at Lehigh since the 07-08 season. Uh, As for Lehigh, they are currently 270th at Ken Palm. They come out of the Patriot League, second in the preseason Patriot League poll, second straight team the Tar have played that are picked second in their league this season. They lost by six on opening night to Cornell. They actually play Penn State tonight, Friday, so that's bad because you know what? Puff Johnson and DeMarco Dunn are going to reveal all our secrets. They're going to know all our plays. We're screwed. (laughs) No, very seriously, uh, that that game will go on on Friday, so if you want to scout ahead and get to check out, uh, at least DeMarco will be in action. I think Puff's on the shelf right now. Um, But as Carolina plays Lehigh on Sunday, two players in particular I want to point out to you. Keith Higgins Jr., who is a preseason All-Patriot League selection, but also do not miss his backcourt mate, Tyler Whitney Sidney. These dudes are both really electric. They're 6'4", 6'3", um, and they combined last year to average like 28 points together, and so very talented backcourt duo. Let me give you, as always, with basketball, our four corners preview as a way to honor Coach Dean Smith. All right. So four things to look for in this game. Four corners preview. Here we go. Number one, I talked about those guards, um, Keith Higgins Jr. and Tyler Whitney Sidney, but it's not just them. Lehigh will have a guard heavy lineup. They'll use all sorts of screening actions. They'll use handoffs, all sorts of stuff to try to create mismatches and advantageous um, opportunities for those ball handlers to get downhill or, or create some separation and get off a shot. Here's the thing, though. What has Carolina been doing defensively different this year? They're switching everything one through four. Everybody but Armando is just switching. Now, Lehigh will look, look to create confusion with that. So we're going to have to watch Carolina. Can they be locked in on switching really, really 
well. They're going to have to be able to do that. Um, so what we're what we're looking to see from Carolina defensively sticking with this is the second half defense we saw against Radford, and less so the first half defense. So we'll be watching for that. Another part of this with their guard heavy lineup is last year they had some bigger wings that made it work really well, like a guy named Evan Taylor. But those guys are gone. Like Evan Taylor's off of Vandy now. And so because of that, and particularly against Carolina, I wouldn't be surprised if they tried to roll out more of a traditional four man, but keep in mind, we won't be doing that, right? Like Harrison Ingram, it will typically be our four guy. So it's going to be interesting to watch, but another guard heavy team and Carolina's going to have their hands full with that. Number two on our four corners preview. However, while Carolina will have to contend with the guard heavy lineup, what's the flip side of that? You want to go small? Cool. Knock yourself out, have fun with it. And while you're doing that, let me introduce you to this gentleman by the name of Armando Linwood Baycott, who's going to eat your lunch all day in the post. In all seriousness, let's stick with that second half of the Radford game conversation. You remember how Carolina came out of the halftime locker room and there was a clear intentional effort to find Armando early and often in the second half. And he was just going at will. If he had had to play more minutes, you better believe, I mean, he could have gotten up to 30 for the first time in his career, career high. Um, if I remember correctly, is 29. I'm pulling that off the top of my head. I'll look it up really quick as we're talking. But um, Armando scored at will with that, and there's great possibility that he could do so again on, um, on Sunday afternoon against this team from Lehigh. So, um, and it all depends on how Lehigh wants to guard him. One-on-one? -on -one? Cool. Great. That'll be two points. Thank you very much. Armando's going to do that. Or if he doesn't finish, he'll get the offensive rebound, pad those stats, and put it back. Or you want to double down on him? Great. He's going to kick out to RJ or Cormac or Elliott or Paxson Wojcik or Harrison Ingram or to like Jalen Withers or Zayden High cutting down the lane viciously. So good luck figuring out how to guard Armando, but that's what's going to happen um, in the post against this Levi team. And keep in mind, let's let the numbers do the talking a little bit. Last year for Lehigh, their opponents finished their post-ups at the 10th highest rate in the country. And uh, so you're talking about Armando Baycott doing that? Yeah, he's going to have a field day, and they're just going to have to deal with whatever Armando's bringing in the post. You know he's going to be ready to go. You know he's going to be firing on all cylinders and that should be electric. Okay, I promise you uh, Armando's, yeah, career high, 29. He did it twice, both um, January of 22. So could be a big day for Armando. Watch for that. Number three on our Four Corners preview, watch for Carolina sharing the basketball. Two prognostications for you. You ready for these? Number one, I believe that Carolina will assist on 60% or more of their made baskets in this game. It was about 55 last game, but there were several that either were missed or weren't finished that could have been assists. So this game, Carolina gets above 60. Here's my other prognostication. This is the game. Game two of his Carolina career, Elliot Cadeau gets to double digit assists for the first time. He had six in 19 minutes. I think this is a game where he will get more playing time. We'll talk more about why I think that in just a second, but we're He'll get more playing time, more opportunity, and that's just four more assists. I think he's going to have a field day distributing the ball on Sunday. Watch out for it. Number four on our Four Corners preview, take care of business. And here's what I mean. On paper, like Ken Palm rankings, remember I said they're 270th at Ken Palm. On paper, this is the second worst team Carolina will play all season long. So I'll say very similar things to what I said in the exhibition game a couple weeks ago. Play your game if you're Carolina execute at a extremely and extremely high level. Don't be sloppy. And I think the biggest thing, the way to keep it in mind is that elite teams do elite things regardless of opponent. That's what I'm going to be watching in on closely. I want to see a locked in North Carolina team from the tip, not, not coming out of the locker room, not 10 minutes in, not five minutes in from the second the ball goes up. And also along with that, and this is why I said what I said about Elliot Cadeau, take care of business early. This type of game is where I don't want to see any Tar Heel play more than 25 minutes. 
I, I expect to see 10 of the 11 scholarship players, everyone except James Oconquo, play double-digit minutes in this game. But that happens if and only if you take care of business, again, from the tip and make it happen. Also, another prediction for this game that's outside of my Four Corners preview, Jalen Washington will hit his first career regular season three-point. Remember, he hit a couple in the in the exhibition game. This is where he does it in a real game. So, and by the way, on Sunday, why not make it a double feature? This game is at two. The ladies play Davidson also at home at six. Just a full day of basketball. Go out and support the Tar Heels. All right. We've been waiting all football season long, and it is finally here, this three-game stretch that's ultimately going to determine how we all feel about that season, and about this season, I should say, and it's going to start with welcoming in Duke for Senior Day. Will Carolina take care of the Blue Devils for the fifth time in a row? We'll get to it in just a second. Right after I tell you that this episode of Locked on Tar Heels is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance, whether it's superchargers or roof racks, exhaust kits or LED headlights. Whether you're into speed or power or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or you get your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. So with all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit only available to U.S. customers. Okay, okay, it's time to switch from basketball to football. No, this is not February. No, it's not March, but Carolina is playing Duke, and it is a big game. Things seem bleak for Carolina's ACC championship host, uh, chances, potential. That was kind of dashed um, on Thursday night as Virginia could not hold on to a late lead against Louisville. Um, there's still slim hope, but um, it's fading. So now you're playing for the respect of having beaten Duke, Clemson, and NC State. Can you pull off this three-game stretch? That would be phenomenal. And despite the disappointment of losing to Virginia and Georgia Tech back-to-back, man, you get, you got to feel good if you can win these three games. Heck, even two of them. So it all starts Saturday night, Carolina versus Duke. November 11th, 8 p.m. Eastern Time on ACC Network. The series, this is the 109th meeting between these two teams. The Tar Heels lead the all-time series, 64 wins, 40 losses, and four ties. Carolina, as you might be aware, has won four straight. They're going for their fifth in a row. The first in that streak was the Chaz Surratt interception game. You remember that? Boy, that was a stressful moment before he caught that ball. I was like, man, this is not good. And then my man rises up, and it was all good. So Carolina looking for that victory bell or looking to keep it for the fifth, uh, I guess it would be keep it for the fourth straight time after getting it back to start that streak. So home against Duke, senior night, homecoming, next week at Clemson, the week after that, NC State. Got to make those next two games matter by winning this one. At, At this point, again, it's about respect. It's about improving your bowl that you're playing in, all of those kind of things. And the the pride of like winning those in, in-state games against Duke and NC State, which you're bookending that Clemson game. So on the Duke side of things, the, the biggest thing I just need to tell you is that there is, we are not expecting, at least at this moment, Riley Leonard, Duke's quarterback, to be able to go. In fact, I've been checking in with all my Duke sources, including the host of Locked on Blue Devils, J.J. Jackson, and he texted me back this. More than likely, we will see true freshman Grayson Loftus, and there's a good chance that Riley Leonard is out for the rest of the season. You hate that. I mean, I know it's Duke, but you just never want to see players injured. That's unfortunate. He goes on, big decision now on if he wants to go to the NFL or come back for another season. So, I mean, that's the level we're talking about with this. Like, he is out and done. And uh, so Loftus, it's nice that you know and can prepare for him rather than just a last minute switch. But 
That's what we're looking at. This game is Carolina by favored by 14. That's a bigger line than I thought it would be. I think it would be with Leonard under center. I think it would be a tighter line, but that's where it's sitting. And with the over under at 50 and a half. So uh, we had our four corners preview with the basketball game. With football games, we do a what to watch for. So four things to be on the lookout for in this game. Let me give them to you. Number one, this is the key to me. Why is it the key? Because this is ultimately what cost Carolina their two losses. Defensive adjustments. If you haven't been tuned into what Carolina football is doing here, here's basically what happened. Um, You know, like broadcasters were saying, oh, they look tired. They're, I don't know why they haven't been playing all that. Well, here's the deal. Uh, Virginia kind of ran the script. Georgia Tech learned the playbook and did it as well. They just went tempo, kept Carolina on the field. They couldn't figure out how to sub, and that's causing guys to be gassed and winded. Remember, Carolina's been really working, particularly along the defensive front, to go several dudes deep, and they just weren't able to do that. So leading up to the Campbell game, worked on a lot of new ways, new quick signal calls, other things to do to keep guys fresh and ready because it's not just about um, tempo and not subs it was also about getting play calls in quickly and so guys weren't sure what to do or roll or assignment or whatever it was so we saw the beginnings of these defensive adjustments against Campbell but it's Campbell right this is the first time where we're going to see it back against an ACC opponent and so it's nice that you had Campbell in between to test out some of those things we saw and, and I talked about Carolina didn't do great with it in the first quarter but man, as that game wore on, they they held Campbell down, right? And so Duke with the backup quarterback, how's Carolina going to be able to do defensively? I mean, we're going to find out. But that is a key, key for me. How are they going to do this against an ACC opponent? Number two on the what to watch for, penalties. Good grief. I am so sick and tired of these holding penalties in particular, calling back critical plays. Now, I know multiple of them have been penalties that you and I would say, he's just bigger. I can't help it. That dude's small and he doesn't get good leverage. Right? Like all sorts of things like that. Um, And I wouldn't say they cost us the game because you still got to go out and win. But they certainly made it more difficult than it should have been particularly like the Virginia game. Um, there was there was the hold on the Omarion Hampton touchdown run against Campbell, which that doesn't win or lose the game, but he would have had over 200 yards rushing and three touchdowns with it. So <clears throat> against Campbell, 10 penalties, 98 yards. Against Georgia Tech, eight penalties, 65 yards. Virginia, not quite as many, six for 58. But then you go back to Miami, and you remember that was the 14 for 147 game. So I... I whether it's Carolina cleaning it up or just hiding it better, I don't know what it is because they're. I don't notice anything that they're doing more egregiously than the other teams and other opponents. But something's got to give. Something's got to change there. Third on the what to watch for. I hate to say it, but here we go again, facing yet another backup quarterback. We already mentioned it, but Carolina just has this negative recent history with facing backup quarterbacks. And not that they've all been losses, you know, they've gotten in the, in the win column against backup quarterback this year, but it is ultimately a good thing to not have to face Riley Leonard, although maybe a gimpy Riley Leonard, you'd kind of take that, but you gotta, you still got to prepare for who's under center. You can't like, there can't be like a mental thing with that of, you know, that, that holds in the way. So Grayson Loftus, here's the thing, go get him, make him uncomfortable. Make him beat you, but make him beat you as you make him as uncomfortable as possible. I want to see Cayman Rucker in the backfield all night long, but not just him. Got to get his buddies there with him, too. That's that's the thing. Um, But you can't, because of having Loftus in, you can't let Duke beat you on the ground. So make Loftus uncomfortable, but be ready to shut down the run. Got to be able to do it. Got to be able to do it. Number four on the what to watch for. For the love of everything holy, do not forget about Omarion Hampton. I cannot bear another Virginia repeat. There's so many things about that game 
that Carolina should have been able to do to win. And obviously this was one of them. So if you're looking for what to watch for at a very specific level, I want my man getting somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 to 25 carries in this game. I'll take a couple more if needed. I just don't want it to be any less than 20. The way he is churning up yardage, even against good defenses, is ridiculous. Let Omarion Hampton eat. This dude has 100-plus rushing yards in four straight games. Just keep feeding the beast. And keep targeting him in the passing game as well. I think that is... Um, A little bit helpful as well, like when their opportunities arise and he can leak out of the backfield a little bit, do it. Particularly if Nate McCollum's down for the count again and you need some help in the slot. Obviously, Kobe's down, so uh, watch for that. But Omarion Hampton, feed him and don't forget about him, for goodness sake. All right, matchup to watch for really quick. The North Carolina offense against the Duke defense. This is going to be a theme of each of the next three games. The North Carolina offense versus the Clemson defense, which at least on paper is the toughest defense Carolina will have faced all year. The North Carolina offense versus the NC State defense on Thanksgiving week. But for this week, it's the Duke defense. Now, here's the thing for me. We've heard about how elite this Duke defense is all year long. But I finally stopped. I hadn't like actually stopped to look at like the yard per game numbers and things like that. They're not as elite as often they're made out to be, at least in terms of yards per game allowed. Carolina offense, though? Yeah, they're elite. The Tar Heels, in case you haven't looked, are third in the nation right now in terms of total yards per game at 518. Duke's defense is good, but I wouldn't call it elite. They're 30th in the nation in yards per game allowed. In fact, Miami's defense at least in terms of, again, total offense allowed, is better than Duke's. You remember what Carolina did against them? 508 yards of total offense. Drake passed for like four touchdowns. So, yes, is the Duke defense good? Absolutely. Is this a something's got to give moment? It is. But it's the Tar Heel offense that's going to win out, believe you me. Duke's going to get them a couple times, right? Like They're a good enough defense that they're going to clip Drake a couple times but he's going to get his, you believe that. Now, Duke's defense is pretty balanced in terms of uh, whether it's weighted more through the air or on the ground. They're allowing 329 yards a game, 179 through the air, 149 on the ground. Translation for the Tar Heels offense, keep playing complimentary football. I just said, don't forget about Omarion Hampton. Lean on that. When they start stacking the box, find your dudes deep. Spread the ball around as Drake always does. And then back to Omarion. Get some play action. You know, do all the things you need to do to keep Duke's defense guessing. That's part of why Carolina is able to do this even against good defenses is because there's so many complementary parts out there. And we need to see that again as Carolina is favored by 14 over Duke on Saturday night. Cannot wait for this game. Please, dear goodness, don't embarrass us. Let's do it. All right. You might recall that Coach Davis has offered seemingly just about every five-star in the class of 2025. Well, two of them are coming to Chapel Hill this weekend for this epic weekend in Chapel Hill, right? Like, what a perfect time to be here. Let's get them reeled in. I'll tell you all about it in just a second. Right after I tell you that this episode of Locked on Tar Heels is brought to you by Jace Medical. And we spend a good deal of time talking together, you and I do. We get fired up on wins and losses, who starts, who sits. And I'm thankful for that connection we have. And today, I want our chat to be just a little bit more personal. Because whether you're on extended travel, bracing for a major weather event, or limited by yet another supply chain shortage, you're covered. Thanks to our partners at Jace Medical, life-saving antibiotics and a long list of daily medications can be ordered in a one-year supply and even ED generics for Cialis and Viagra, things like that. So go online right now at jacemedical.com to receive your 12-month supply on your daily medication. Remember to use promo code Locked On at checkout for a discount as well. A verified customer had this to say, quote, I am thankful for this service. Supply chain issues caused me to cut pills in half in order to have it. But I ordered most of my daily meds with a year supply. I also ordered the antibiotic kit. I feel secure now. Prices are lower than local pharmacies. I highly recommend this service for everyone. So if you or someone you love would be able to get some peace of mind 
by having a year's supply of any daily med, go to jacemedical.com to see if it's offered for you. Remember to use code promo code locked on for $20 off your purchase. Again, locked on for $20 off your purchase at jacemedical.com. Okay, Koa Pete, Caleb Wilson, two of the elite top five level players in the class of 2025. Both coming to Chapel Hill this weekend, one on an official, one on an unofficial visit. They uh, Class of 25, by the way, is this year's junior. So they got two more years left of high school. Maybe. <laughs> Let's start with Koa Pete. He comes in on Friday today on an official visit visit. So he's the one taking an official visit to Carolina. It's his third. He's already been to Texas and to Michigan. He is the number four consensus player in this class. Um, at the four main recruiting sites, he's third at ESPN and Rivals. He's fourth at 247, and he is eighth at on three. Six, seven power forward, 200 pounds. One of these really versatile, new age, almost positionless players that can do it all. Inside, outside, defense, you name it, he's got it. What about the other guy, Caleb Wilson? He's going to come the next day on Saturday. His is an unofficial visit. He's taken two officials already, one to Auburn and the other to ACC juggernaut Stanford Cardinal. Um, and he's taken four unofficials, Kentucky, Georgia Tech, Tennessee, and Alabama. So uh, a little more all over the place already for Caleb Wilson. He comes in just right behind Koa Pete in the consensus rankings number five, although there's a bit more consensus across the board with him. He's ranked fourth at on three ESPN and rivals and fifth at two, four, seven. So just right there again, top five at literally every of the four major recruiting services, just about that same size as Koa Pete, a couple inches taller, a little bit lighter though, six, nine power forward, 195 pounds. And so these do same, same kind of player, versatile, capable, inside, outside, can do it all. This is a perfect weekend for these guys to be on uh, on campus. They're going to be able to take in a practice. Um, Saturday, you got a night game, 8 o'clock. It's against Duke, so do not lose that because otherwise that's an advertisement for the Blue Devils. You know what I mean? So you are locking yourself into, we got to win this football game. But they get all day, you know what I'm saying? They can in, engage in tailgating and just be part of that whole game day experience, which is awesome. I love that. And then Sunday, you got this basketball game against Lehigh. You know, it's not going to be an electric environment. It's the second worst team, again, on paper you play all year, but a great opportunity to showcase the Tar Heels. Now, Let's talk a little recruiting strategy about it because here's where we're at in this day and age. I love what Coach Davis is doing. He's not going for the guys in the 30s, 40s, and 50s who might play a year in transfer. Literally all every shot that he's taken, every scholarship he's offered in the class of 2025, nine of them have gone nowhere lower than the top 16 players. In fact, of the top eight players, he's offered seven of them. And I'm talking the consensus rankings. Um, all of these dudes, including, of course, Koa Pete and Caleb Wilson. So seven of the nine offers are top eight players. The other two, Jasper Johnson, who's 13th. And then 16, Caden Boozer, who's Cam Boozer's brother that Carolina has offered. The second player in the class only bumped down because A.J. DeBonsa reclassified down to 2025 from 2026. So here's what you need to know. Coach Davis has cast a wide net, knowing he won't get all or even most of these dudes. And, and you need to be aware of that. Like they, you, Carolina will not, there's nine offers. I'm I'm looking at one, two, maybe three would be awesome. But really, one or two is a massive win. So Carolina, it's almost like a, a baseball hitter, right? The best hitters in the world fail 70% of the time. And that's a 300 batter. That's what we're talking about. If Carolina can land two ninths of these dudes, you love it. Like that is a home run over the moon. So. Landing one or two is a win. Don't be in, discouraged if other guys pick somewhere else. But here's here's the other thing I need to say about Koa Pete and Caleb Wilson. You just heard me talk about them and how they play the same position. But it is not a one or the other situation. They're not coming in and being pitted against each other. Somebody commit this weekend or the scholarship's gone. Despite their positional similarity, they're both versatile enough 
that in this day and age of positionless basketball, you want both of them. In fact, a couple of these other top guys that we're talking about, like Cam Boozer, for example, um, Bryson Tiller, who's playing with Overtime Elite in Atlanta, they are positionally similar to these guys as well. Keep pursuing them all because you can utilize all of these versatile guys. This is the new age basketball player, and you want to stockpile them. So keep your eyes on these dudes. But this weekend, Koa Pete, Caleb Wilson, if you see them around campus, make sure to welcome them in. Speaking of around campus this weekend, let me quickly run us through a weekend whip around because there is a ton of action. Start with field hockey. Um, NCAA tournament starts this weekend today at noon. So uh, depending on when you're listening to this, it might have already happened. Uh, Carolina plays William and Mary, who won a play-in game um, in the first round, noon ESPN+. Plus. If they win Sunday, they play in the next round against either Rutgers or Harvard. That'll be noon on ESPN+. Plus. So stay tuned for that. Women's soccer versus Towson in the NCAA tournament. That is six on ESPN+. Plus. I believe that one's Sunday. I forgot to write down the day. Forgive me on that. Men's soccer. Boy, what a run they're on was the seventh seed in the ACC tournament. They beat Syracuse on Wednesday night, 3-1 to one in the semifinals, and now play for the championship Sunday at noon on ESPN. They're the seventh seed. That's so wacky. And they're playing Clemson, who's a four seed. So all the top three seeds are gone. No reason Carolina can't win this thing. ACC tournament championship. Love to see it. Volleyball at Wake Forest tonight at 7 on ACC Network Extra. And then Sunday, Got to go to number five in the nation, Louisville. That's tough. 1 p.m. on ACC Network Extra. Wrestling. Uh, a couple things this weekend, both on Saturday. Wrangle Mania in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania versus Buffalo Saturday at noon. And then Arizona State at 4 p.m. Those are both on Flow Wrestling. Fencing. They're in Fort Worth. That's wild. And then Cross Country has the Southeast Regional Championships in Spartanburg this weekend as well so friends that's it for today's episode of locked on tar heels and for the weekend or for this week thank you so much as always for coming to join us it's great to be together i love how this community continues to grow both here through the podcast and in our discord so again come join us we'd love to have you in there it's growing so quickly and it's a lot of fun great conversation if you don't want to do that, you can interact with us on Twitter. You see all the handles. If you're watching on YouTube, you can email the show LockedOnTarHeels at gmail.com. Don't forget to subscribe uh, on video and audio. It helps so much. Your downloads, your watches on YouTube, so do your reviews. So if you are on Apple Music or anywhere else, it would mean so much if you would go leave a review of the show. Don't forget to come join us on Monday. We'll be recapping stuff, probably do a short recap of the football game over the weekend, and then Monday will be mostly about basketball. It's always a great day to be a Tar Heel. We'll be back together very soon, but until then, peace. Peace.